You guys know me, I am a true Affinity fanboy. I like everything Affinity. Uh, maybe not everything, but 99.573% I like. But there is one thing that I used to do a lot in Adobe Photoshop that I cannot do in Affinity Photo. It's time for us to talk about alpha channels. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist designer based in Southern California and I'm about ready to talk about something that is not very sexy, at least from the standpoint of when you hear it, it's like that doesn't sound very interesting, Dave, but I'm going to tell you right now that alpha channels are the thing. At least while I was using Adobe Photoshop, they were a fundamental step in my whole design process. And it frustrates me so much that I cannot use them the same way in Affinity Photo that I did in Photoshop. But like I said in the beginning, I found a workaround and I want to share this with you because maybe, just maybe, this will open up a whole new range of design opportunity for you. So let's say I want to create a t-shirt design and I want to use some clip art to do that. I'm getting that clip art out of a big book like this. Scanning a picture or taking a picture and bringing it into Affinity Photo. That, I mean, a lot of people have done it. I do it all the time. But how do I get it so that the what I pull from this ends up being a really good, clean piece of art that I can potentially reuse, not just within the piece that I have, but in other pieces. So if you look at this piece that I've got right here, I wanted to use this guy who seems to be crying in his just desk chair for something I was thinking about like the potential crash of the stock market or you know something like that I don't know I was like trying to think like you know doom and gloom and maybe making light of that so obviously I need to clip it out of all this other stuff so let's get to clipping now to do this I'm just going to use the pen tool and make this really simple now it's going to fill and I want that and I don't want a stroke so that's no stroke okay good if I did start creating a path with that fill, it would just start filling it and I don't want that. I'm just gonna start clicking a really rough path. I just want to knock this guy out of the rest. Close the path and then turn that into a selection and then I'm gonna go Command C and Command V. And now I've got to copy that and I can actually get rid of the background and you can see. I'm gonna make this non-transparent background just so you can see it against there. You can already tell that the color isn't right, it's gray. I definitely need to make some adjustment here to make this not gray. And I'm gonna to go to levels, and I'm just gonna tighten this up quite a bit. Make sure I can see it all so I don't wanna to lose too much of it, but I'm okay with getting rid of some of the detail. I, I, I want some more grit. I wanna keep the grit. Now I can do this with levels. I can do this with uh, brightness and contrast. I could do this with threshold. I could do this with curves. Levels is just the easiest one right off the bat. I'm just gonna go ahead and merge that right onto that layer. And if I bring this other one, you can see the color has been pretty, pretty dramatic different. I'm gonna drop in this fill layer just so that I can see what's going on here. And you can see that you know, there's obviously a lot of whiteness here. Now I could just go in, let's say I go with my magic wand. So I'm on this layer and I've selected all the white. And it seems to be a really good, but you can tell that it's obviously, it's leaked into some spaces here. I don't want this here to be selected. I want that to be good. And there's probably some other ones. Actually, this one's funny. This one's pretty good. So I could almost, wow, uh, there's a little bit, a little bit of remnants there. This one's actually, man, this has got to be one of the best that I've ever done. I bet you, let's just test something here. This might be make it moot, but I'm still gonna go ahead and push forward. So I'm gonna change to my brush tool, change that to black. I'm gonna bring in a really small brush smaller than that, get rid of that selection. And I'm just gonna close that hole. Let's make sure that see if there's any holes. That one's probably not a big deal. Any more holes, that looks like it. Wow, okay, so let's test this again. This may be the worst case example for what I'm trying to prove and you know, whatever. So uh, yeah, look at that. It's actually pretty good. Here's one test, I'm just gonna delete. Ah, not bad. Oh, see, there was some space right there. Look at that. I could have closed that gap right there and it would have been fine. This goes completely against what I'm actually trying to prove. Now it's solid. Now I could always go and select that, you know, if I wanted to do that. But that's not what I'm here to do. What I'm here to do is to show you how to turn this into an alpha channel. Now, the way I would do this in Adobe Photoshop before was actually really easy. In fact, you can still do it in Adobe Photoshop. I just don't use Photoshop, but you can do it. Copy this image, you paste it into a blank white alpha channel and then everything that becomes white will now be a selection. So you can reverse it out. You can invert the color and that way it would be black on white instead of white on black. And that way you could take that and turn that into a selection anytime you want it. So here's the channels palette right here. If I took this, made a selection, copied this, 
and then said, hey, let's make a new channel. I, like, there's nothing that shows me that I can do a new blank channel. I can't do a new blank channel. I could go, hey, let's uh, let's create a, a spare channel. So I've got this spare channel, but the channel is based on the selection that I already have going on. And that's not doing anything for me. Now, another way you can do this is you could say, let's say I want to, let's do that. Let's say I want that. Let's say I want to do a composite red or or maybe the green. And let's say, let's create spare channel. Let's see what happens. So I click on that. Let's say load to pixel, it, right? I mean, it's pretty close, but it's not perfect. That could be an option. That is one option. Is it going to be perfect? Maybe, maybe not. Here's another way. Make sure you're on the right layer. Go over here to select tonal range and you want to select all the shadows. And you can see it's selected everything. They have a couple of options at this point. There are three things that you can do to turn this into a selection you might use again or just a digital layer that has just the information that you're looking for. So my goal here is to remove all of the black data and put it on its own separate layer. Now the easiest way for me to do that in Adobe Photoshop would be to put it into an alpha channel, but we can't do that here because when I copy and paste it in there, it's not gonna work. So the way I do that here in Affinity Photo is I make sure I'm on that layer and then I'm gonna go to select and I'm gonna go to tonal range and select shadows. And that gives me all of the black data or at least all of the darkened shadowish data. So now the quickest way for me to accomplish my goal would be very simply to go Command C or copy and then paste into a new layer. And so now you can see as I got rid of the, the original layer, I've got my solid black data. This is a very dirty, grungy image. So detail isn't going to be a major issue. If your image that you're trying to do this with is a little bit more detailed, well, then you might try a different approach. The one I actually prefer is if you go up here to select, you go to select sample color, which is unlit right now because I don't have anything selected. That will give me a lot more flexibility in how much I want to copy or create on a new layer. But here's the thing. As you can see, this layer is on its own layer and then there's nothing going on in the background. The select sample color works pretty good and I could do it on this, but what's going to happen is anything outside of that white spectrum, like anything that looks like technically green at this point, that's all gonna get filled in as well. So really the best way to do this with select sample color is we go up here, I'm gonna create a new fill layer and I'm gonna make that one white and I'm just gonna group those and rasterize that. I know this seems counterintuitive because I went and clipped all the way around that, but this, trust me, this works much better. So I've got that as its own layer now. That white background is now part of the whole thing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to select. We're gonna go to select sample color and I'm gonna zoom in. As you can see, there's quite a bit of data that's not being selected. In fact, this whole thing, maybe it's being selected, maybe it's not. If you go in here and zoom in here, like there's some weird stuff being like, not being selected. So I'm gonna click on the black and now more is being selected, or rather more is being not selected in the white area. But you can see, even here if, here, if I zoom in super tight, this is really high intensity zoom at this point. But if I go down here to my select sample palette, so excuse me, select sample color palette, and I adjust my tolerance, I can bring it way down and start taking in more of that data. That's not great, but that 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 little dot right there is pretty small, so I'm not that worried about it. There's other ones here that you know are going to be a little bit better. I'm getting in more data from that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And now instead of just copying and pasting, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna create a brand new layer and I'm gonna make sure on that layer it's filled with black. All I did was fill with black. I clicked on that right there. I could also go up to file and, or edit rather and fill with whatever color. It's not showing me on the color palette right now, but uh, what if a primary, secondary color, whatever. And now as you can see, I have that layer as its own layer. I already did that, right? I already did it once. It looks exactly the same. And maybe it does and maybe it doesn't. Oh, I moved it around. So this is gonna look a little weird. Bear with me for a second. But if you look at this one, this is the first one I did. Look at how jagged those lines are. Now again, this is kind of a grungy image, so it's not gonna matter too much, but you can see that it's pretty jaggedy. Turn that one off and then we'll turn this one on. And this one just has a little bit more detail 
a little bit more edginess, maybe a little too much, but this way it's a little softer in the right way. It doesn't look like a jaggedy mess and that's gonna make for a better illustration t-shirt or whatever. And that's basically it. That is how I take clip art that I pulled from a book or something like that, or even photos or images. I could do this with anything that I wanted to turn into a single color image or a single color document. I could go back in and obviously I could fill that Make a selection, fill it with blue, right? Let's see, well, let's go here. Let's just mess around, play a secondary color. Uh, why didn't that work? <laughs> oh, I did because I did secondary. Primary color, blue. I don't know if it looks great or not, and that it's got some remnants of the black and obviously this other line going on. So there's some details to work out. The point being is that you don't have to fret over the fact that you can't use alpha channels the same way in Affinity Photo that you can in Photoshop. And just to prove to you how quick you can actually get this done, I'm gonna do that whole process again without stopping, and this is real time. There you go. I was bumbling along a little bit there, but that's basically how quickly you could do this. But wait, there's more. Let's go back and bring out the channels again, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going back to my layer with my art. I'm going to command and click or make a selection based on that piece. Then I'm going to go down here to pixel selection and I'm going to go create spare channel. Now watch this. I'm going to click on that. It is now the reversed out, which is essentially exactly what you would be able to create in Adobe Photoshop. This now is an alpha channel or a mask that I can use in any circumstance anywhere throughout this document. If I right click on this and go load to pixel selection and go back to my main image, if I wanna fill with let's say red or purple green or whatever, here we go, I've got it. Now I could just copy and paste this if I wanted to, but that channel is there. If I deleted this, let's say I delete all these, right? I still have that channel and I can come back in here and do it all over again. So let's go here, right click, load to pixel selection, create a new layer, change that to whatever color I want. Deselect so you can see, just like that. That spare channel is always going to be with this image. I don't necessarily need to have that layer in there. I mean, I don't know why I would 
need to delete it for this particular image, but now that I have that channel there, it will always be available to me. The one thing that I wish I could do that I don't think is possible is that I would be able to copy this alpha channel and carry it over into another document. Now, maybe there's a way to load alpha channels that I haven't come across yet. I'm not the expert on this yet. I'm still kind of bumbling my way through it, but if I had that ability, that would make it perfect. Photoshop, I can do this. I can carry an alpha channel from one document into another. Yeah, I don't see anything that gives us that flexibility, so it's, it's not a perfect system. It's not as elegant as they do in Adobe Photoshop, but there's still the workaround. And it goes right back to what I was saying in a video before about work with the tools you got. That's what a professional would do. So again, this works best on straight black and white images or grayscale images. You could do it with color stuff, but it's not going to be as good as just, you know, like doing a clipping path around a photo image or something like that. It's best for these situations where it's a pretty much a true black and white image. That is absolutely the best way to use this process, but you can experiment all you want. Maybe you find some fun way to use it to your advantage that works for your work. And on that note, I'm gonna get out. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about the process, go down into the comments and ask me. I will do my best to answer them or it may end up in a future video. While you're headed down there, make sure you hit that like button. And if you think somebody else would enjoy this, share it with your homies. Now, if you wanna see another circumstance where I actually use this process in one of my designs, you can check out that video right there. And on my second channel, I talked about using merch and print on demand for brands that you would not normally think about. That's one right there. Thanks very much for your attention, guys. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya.